Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to continue working on our pause menu script by turning it into a singleton object. So, if you're not familiar with the singleton design uh, pattern, it's where you would have one item inside of a scene that spawned from a class. So basically, whenever you have a singleton, you can only create one of in your scene, and it should be able to be statically referenced, usually by the name of the class dot instance, and then you reference whatever methods you want in it. So using a library like yeah, Singleton, which implements that design pattern, uh, works out really well for us when we want something like a system, which should be global, um, stay in the scene, possibly transition between scenes and still be there, but gives us the ability to have global functionality that we could easily reference in other scripts. And knowing that no matter what, because we're statically referencing that class, it's going to be talking about the same object at all times from all scripts. So if you go into the Unity Asset Store, you can search for Yes Singleton, which as you can see is a free add-on. Um, just by typing in Yes Singleton, it'll be the first one in there. And YA just means yet another Singleton library. And so we can import that into our project. Um, you don't need the examples unless you don't want it to be there. Just everything under the Yes Singleton folder, import that. Okay, so now that we have this in a folder in our project, uh, if you want to pop that into a plugins folder, I, gu I guess we can do that. It kind of makes sense. So I'll create a folder called plugins and we will drop yes singleton into that just for better organization but now we can edit any model behavior script and turn it into a singleton object okay so earlier i actually meant we were going to take the game scene manager script and turn that into a singleton object uh, the pause menu if we have a pause menu script at all that will still be attached to the prefab where we have a pause menu prefab um, but for this game scene manager, anything that's a manager is, is going to be something that we want to have a global presence within the game. So it's a perfect case for using Singleton. So to use the uh, Singleton package, all we need to do is change it from a mono behavior into a Singleton of the type of the class. So if we have public class game scene manager, then it's Singleton game scene manager. So we're basically wrapping our class inside of a Singleton object here. And we can import that using yeah singleton uh so now at this point this class uh whenever we have it inside the game it should only be able to have one instance of the game scene manager and we should be able to statically reference it so how the singleton library here works is that uh, all of these scriptable objects meaning you can create an instance of them inside of our game resources, the assets folder, uh, they'll all be collected and managed inside of the singleton updater script, which loads when the game loads. So the singleton updater will pick up all of our singleton uh, classes, all the instances of those classes, and load them with that helper script. So by having that helper class, um, it's able to pick up on all of these scriptable objects and allow them to run their game functionality without themselves actually technically being mono behaviors. And uh, because they're managed by the singleton updater, you're also able to call stuff like on update inside of a uh, singleton object. So uh, now just to show, if we dive into singleton and then base singleton, that's where you can see that it is a scriptable object. So being the game scene manager is now a scriptable object, we can actually put in an attribute here so that it can be created as an asset inside of our project and it'll automatically be picked up on by the singleton updater without us having to actually attach it to a game object in the scene. So to do that, we use the create asset menu attribute, which will take, I believe it's a file name. And we will set that string to be game scene manager and menu name will be the path and the name of this create assets menu function uh, in the right click and uh, up here at game object, I think. It's either game object or component. It'll show up here uh, for us to be able to call that function and actually create the game asset. Uh, so let me show you what I mean here. We're going to call this systems as a path and then game scene manager which means it's going to be added in a menu folder called systems and then under that is going to be game scene manager 
So as long as we save this, we should be able to see the create asset menu function back inside of Unity. So if I right click here, uh, after everything compiles, and we go to create, you can see this new menu item called systems, and it has game scene manager under it. So by using that right click menu going up to assets create systems, we can now create an instance of that game scene manager to store inside of our project, much like a prefab would. But I'm going to create this in a folder called resources. I believe that's the standard way to do it. And in this, I don't know, we'll make another folder. We'll call it systems. Just kind of organizing everything here. And inside of here, we'll actually run that function. So create systems, game scene manager. And oh, look at that. Now we have a game scene manager inside of our project. You can see that it still takes references to the pause menu prefab and the canvas prefab. And if we hit play to load the game, uh, this game scene manager should show up in don't delete on uh, scene load. So let's see, or don't destroy on load. And you can see it's being managed by the singleton updater. And we can see all of our singleton objects automatically populate in here. So this is really cool. Any kind of system you want to have inside of your game, something that should always exist, uh, you can just create a singleton object for it and it'll automatically load with your game. You don't have to attach it to anything in the hierarchy, any mode. Singleton updater will automatically be instantiated uh, as long as you have that plugin inside of your project. So this is really, really cool. And hopefully in future videos, I'll show you guys a lot more that we can do with this as well. So for now, you probably want to actually change this game scene manager to have the uh, default set. So we can go grab the prefabs. So let's see uh, the pause menu prefab and the canvas prefab. And if we get rid of the canvas inside of the scene and hit play, we should be able to use this game scene manager in the same way pretty much uh, that it worked when we had it attached to a script. So let's see, escape here. Uh, but uh, one error we're running into, we do need to make sure that uh, Game Scene Manager is no longer attached to Event System or anything else in the scene because it's no longer a mono behavior, which means you can't attach it to anything. It's a scriptable object now. Um, so let's see, Event Systems, Game Scene Manager. Yeah, okay, so we should remove that. And now we can go ahead and hit play and it should work properly now. Okay, it's playing. Uh, looks like no more errors and we hit Escape. And it's now actually taking the escape function. So let's go back in the code and see what went wrong here. Ah, okay. So um, the thing is, update no longer exists. Remember, this is a scriptable object now. But because this actually gets added onto singleton updater, which is an executor behavior, uh, basically functions like a mono behavior for our purposes, what we call instead of update is on update. And that's all we should have to do. Okay, it should be public override on update. If you want to see any of the other functions that exist for these singletons, uh, you can just right click and go to definition and go to base singleton definition. And you can see these functions you can hook onto inside of the Unity lifecycle. So on fixed update, if you're doing physics, on update, on late update, if you need something to happen after uh, on update, and you have several other methods there. And you can also do an override of on initialize, which of course you're going to want to do based on update. So this gets called still so that the singleton updater actually grabs this singleton. Uh, and deinitialize, where you can have stuff happen when this um, singleton object is no longer being used. But for now, uh, public override void on update and whatever code you want it to run. And we can go ahead and hit play now. We hit escape and look at that. The pause menu is being instantiated from our scriptable object, which is a singleton and only one will exist inside of the game. And the reason we're doing all of this is that now that we know this game scene manager is an object, which will always have an instance of it, as long as you've created the scriptable object, um, then we can just reference game scene manager instance anytime we want to get anything off of this game scene manager, such as a reference to the canvas prefab or the pause menu prefab. 
So that's going to help us out a lot when we're trying to reference it without actually seeing it inside of the hierarchy. So like if you have to reference a game object directly that's inside your hierarchy, it needs to be put there before the scene exists. But if we can just call the class dot instance, then as long as there's an instance inside of our currently running game, it'll get reference to that. So in the next video, we'll be working on the pause menu and probably changing around a little bit of the code in the game scene manager, changing this to uh, be more like open menu that we can call on any game object that is a menu. And in the end, we'll be able to have the pause menu open up this save menu and probably implement some more menu based functionality there. So until the next video, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next Unity video.